Hello, hello. It's Alicia from Quick and Delish. Here to get you inspired by spinach. <laughs> I planted, check this out. This, I know you can't see how much this is, but this is all spinach. So <laughs> uh, I believe it's a, a Bloomsdale um, variety, I think. Um, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, super dark green. So um, the end of January 2021, and now it's the beginning of April, I planted six starter plants of spinach in my little community garden plot, which is merely like five, five feet by three feet or five feet by four feet or something like that. And I produced in about eight weeks, six to eight weeks, I produced this much spinach. There's like 10 more leaves in here. And I'm just showing off my spinach, basically. <laughs> I'm very excited. This is the first time I've produced spinach. And uh, created what are grown spinach. <laughs> it's really cool. And I washed it probably like four times already. But um, I'm probably going to wash it again uh, just a couple more times to make sure I got all the dirt off. Um, usually it's grown in sandy soil. And so um, that's why it's good to, for us to wash it when we get it, get it home um, to make sure we get rid of all the sand because eating sandy spinach is like not quite as bad as biting on a, an olive pit, but within the spectrum of extra unpleasant. <laughs> anyway, so I just wanted to remind you, so I, I just grew my own fresh spinach. And then you could buy, you know, baby spinach to make a salad or put in a smoothie. Or you can just, you can get um, like the larger spinach leaves that have like long stems with them. And like you can eat the whole, like the whole spinach bunch, except for maybe like the end that's uh, close to where the root is. So like the stems and everything, you don't have to just like cut off the stems and discard them, right? It's similar to the idea of like, you could eat the broccoli stem, right? Sometimes you wanna remove some of the outside of the broccoli stem because it's really tough, but the inside is sweet and delicious. So don't overlook the stems. Same goes with kale or Swiss chard. And then friendly reminder, you can always use frozen spinach. This is a chopped spinach from uh, Earthbound. Uh, but sometimes I like to get the frozen spinach from Whole Foods because it's not like a frozen block. Like this, if it's frozen, it's just chopped spinach. So it's all like smashed together in this like blob. Or you can buy like the frozen spinach bricks basically. And those are like just frozen bricks and you have to like wait until they thaw or like thaw them in the microwave or something. Interesting. So I like at Whole Foods, the 365 brand of spinach, it's like frozen leaves. And so you can like break it up and then like just shake it into like a soup or something. And so I like um, figuring out ways to just easily add vegetables, like shake frozen veggies into a dish that you're going to heat up or like add a little bit of spinach to a soup close to the end of cooking. So fresh spinach can be great to have around for many reasons. Also quick tip. Um, uh, one of my um, dietetic student volunteers, she told me that when spinach is like, you know, like you're not going to use the spinach, it, it's fresh spinach like this, you know, for sure that the next couple days, you're not going to be able to use all of the fresh spinach that you have. You just put it in the freezer and then you just use it frozen. So I use this strategy when I freeze items all the time. Like I just think about what am I going to eat the next three days and then freeze the rest so that I don't, I'm going to forget in three days <laughs> if I'm going to freeze something or not. And so if I'm thinking about it right then, I just freeze whatever I'm not going to eat in three days. And then I have more choices. And then there's less food waste, which means less money wasted. And we get super bummed out when we waste food and money because it's like a double whammy, right? It's not just the food, but it's also the money that went into purchasing. And so those of you buy like large amounts of greens, whether or not whatever grocery store, some of some grocery stores have like really large containers of greens, salad, you know, salad lettuces, you could actually freeze those, but know that you're not gonna be able to make a lettuce, a salad with them. They could go into your smoothies as lettuce in your smoothies, or you can make a lettuce soup if you're into that. 
So you can freeze a lot of items. It's just experimenting, seeing how your freezer does and uh, does in terms of freezing those items. Um, so that would be really cool. So what I'm gonna do with this spinach, what? This precious spinach, I'm gonna wash it a couple more times and then I'm going to sweat a leek and then half of this spring green garlic. This is garlic before it turns into a bulb. Isn't it cool? You don't really, sometimes you can use some of the greens but these are kind of tough. So I'm gonna use all of the white and so half of these, half of leek, half of a green garlic, half of a red bell pepper. I just cut off a little bit soft part needs to go. Um, and the spinach goes in after I sweat the onions and the garlic. And then I'll determine whether or not I need to add more spinach. But I only have seven eggs to use. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I, fro I roasted... Um, these potatoes, these are roasted potatoes I roasted with rosemary, fresh rosemary, and za'atar spice last week. So I'm going to use these to make the frittata with all these veggies. And I might use some Brussels sprouts in the frittata, or I might just cook the Brussels sprouts on their own, depending on how, if the Brussels sprouts are ready to go in the frittata, when that's ready to go, if you know what I'm saying. Other things that I'm making today, I got a couple bunches of fresh basil. So I'm going to make some pesto and then freeze it in like half cup containers. I'll probably end up just making like a cup of pesto and then, you know, freeze three different containers. One's for this week. I'll probably add a little bit of pesto into the frittata, which will make it a little bit better, a whole lot better, actually. I was under-exaggerating. Sometimes we under-exaggerate and sometimes we just got to say it's going to make it a whole lot better. <laughs> okay, cool. So basil pesto, and the other thing I'm gonna make is I got a bunch of fresh dill. Isn't that so cool? <laughs> anyway, me and my dill. Dill is an underappreciated fresh herb. I'm gonna make a dressing with Meyer lemons because I have some Meyer lemons that I need to be used. I'm gonna zest the lemons, juice the lemons, add half of that bunch of uh, fresh dill, um, and then some vinegar, I'll probably use sherry vinegar or balsamic vinegar, depending on what I feel and the amount that I have. I know I have to get new, more, uh, balsamic vinegar, but anyway, um, and then, uh, salt, pepper, olive oil, make a dressing. If I feel like it, I might add an avocado to the dressing as well. So it'll be a dill, My Meyer lemon, olive oil, sherry vinegar, maybe avocado dressing I'm going to put in the refrigerator and use that this week with salads or just you know drizzle some on my frittata if I want to um yeah probably just on my veggies and salads and then I'm also going to make a lentil soup if I have time cool we'll see you about the lentil soup that's I'm non-committal about that one and anyway so spinach is awesome oh if you ever get a chance spinach with eggs and avocado are fantastic for the brain. I highly recommend getting pasture-raised eggs when you, whenever you can. It's an investment in your health. So think of food as an investment in your health. Avocado, eggs, and spinach, or any greens, but spinach. Spinach has lycopene in it, which is a, a plant, phytonutrient, plant chemical. I'm, anyway, that's not a pretty leaf. Sorry, I'm trying to, I'm making a pretty combination. Okay, here we go. This is it. <laughs> Avocado, spinach, and eggs together. Fantastic. Maybe sweet potato. Ooh, yeah. Mm -mm. Or a huevos rancheros kind of thing. That's one of my favorite breakfasts, all time favorite breakfasts. Although I don't tend to have favorites because I like to eat a variety of foods but if I were to choose a breakfast that was like super hearty and just like hit the spot it would be huevos rancheros eggs black beans or whatever kind of beans I'm not really persnickety about my beans avocado probably salsa there's so many different types of salsas out there hit me with one or two <laughs> And then maybe some spinach or some other veggies like roasted zucchini, whatever's in season. We got to go with what's in season. 
some fresh corn might be really nice for the sweetness. Yeah. Mm -mm. I should come up with a couple different versions of uh, huevos rancheros. Because huevos rancheros is like an everyday type of meal, right? You can have it with corn tortillas or without. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, small version for a snack, and you're just like on it. You got your fuel, got your nutrition, and you're like, bring it on. <laughs> okay, so to be continued, I hope you were inspired to add spinach in some way or any green leafy vegetables. If you don't like spinach, like I'm not forcing spinach on you. You know what I mean? Like try another leafy green. There's so many different ones to try, really. So add variety to your diet and try different ways of having the same ingredients in different ways. Add spinach to a smoothie. Somewhere around here is a strawberry smoothie with arugula. Instead of arugula in the smoothie, add the spinach. Or add some kale. Or add some frozen kale. Or add some frozen spinach. Any way that we can add a little bit more vegetables... Anyway, we can sneak in a little bit more vegetables is awesome. Cool. Well, until next time, I hope you enjoyed hearing me and my success in growing some spinach. <laughs> to be continued, I'm I'm a um, just a very beginner in kindergarten in terms of maybe second grade in terms of gardening. So that's it from me. I hope you uh, hope to see you next time. Until next time, take care. Bye bye.